Hello, and welcome to this week's Movie Math, where Warner Brothers' master plan laughed at. Well, the industry was like, what the hell are you doing? And fans were like, yes. But you know, this day and date release in theaters and on HBO Max at no extra cost. Although HBO Max is the most expensive streaming service. But still, after a wobbly start, it finally seems to be steady on its feet and picking up speed. You're doing it, Warner Brothers. You're doing it. Now, in the early days of the pandemic, it was Universal who dominated. With their new 17-day window that they pioneer pioneered with AMC theaters and which other theaters quickly signed on to. That's, it releases in theaters, and then 17 days later, about three weeks, it hits PVOD rental uh, for a 48-hour rental for $20. Uh, but now, Warner Brothers, who again offers their films day and date at no extra cost on HBO Max, now has the two top box office debuts for the pandemic, and this weekend, four of the top 10 movies at the box office, more than any other studio. Now, those box office numbers are low, but at least Warner Brothers is making money. Now, we won't have a full picture as to how they're doing until we get the updated HBO Max subscriber count. And I don't suspect we'll get an update until probably... I would suspect even mid to late April, because I think they're going to want to show a subscriber count after the Snyder Cut hits, Godzilla vs. Kong, and Mortal Kombat, which is April 16th, because all three movies are incredibly hotly anticipated. What a slate. HBO Max is low on the new shows. That's where Disney Plus is dominating right now. But they got the movies. Oh, they've got the movies. We'll talk about what Disney might be doing with their movies in just a moment. But anyway, let's talk about Tom and Jerry, because boy, is this a success. It opened with 13.7 million, the second highest pandemic debut after Wonder Woman 1984. And it's close between the two of them. It's close. And it's also, it's right, it's basically right between Wonder Woman 1984 and The Croods 2. And The Croods is no, nothing to laugh at. The Croods is still getting closer and closer to Tenet, uh, which is currently the number one domestic film overall of the pandemic. And Tenet, by the way, is still clearly the worldwide winner. It's not even close with anybody else, unless in China, and, you know, I wish someone would check China. China is like the streaming of the box office. Nobody really knows how stuff's doing over there. But anyway, uh, Tenet's also a Warner Brothers movie, so that's just another win for the studio. Speaking of overseas box office, Tom and Jerry did very well there too, adding an extra $25.1 million to its opening weekend. And while a lot of people hate watch Tom and Jerry uh, on Twitter, it trended all day on Friday, People who actually paid to see the film in theaters loved it. You know, this is a little bit of a problem with, uh, you know, not having customers have to pay for something. It's something I worry about a little bit with the subscription model for movie theaters as well. If someone doesn't have to pay to, to get something, it has significantly less value to the consumer. Also, I think a lot less respect. So you have a lot of people watching Tom and Jerry because, hey, why not? It's free with your HBO Max subscription. Although I'm glad so many people, although some of you might be sailing the pirate seas, but still people did choose to watch it, but you know, because it was free. And so you have a lot of people rushing in. I think the same thing kind of happened with Wonder Woman too. Uh, that's another good question. What's the hate barometer that some of these films might be attracting? I mean, they say there's no such thing as bad publicity. Um, although tell that to Wonder Woman 1984. But, you know, a lot of people watch Tom and Jerry who maybe otherwise wouldn't have, and that's why they were so negative. But people who forked over money and actually went out to a theater to see it, well, they loved it. I got an A-minus cinema score, which is very hard to do. Uh, that's excellent. Uh, I got a 79% positive from Post Track. And thanks to diverse casting, something I commented on in my review, I love the movie. I thought the film was extremely well cast. And audience, the audience demographics were really evenly split. That's unusual to see for a movie. So this is impressive. Tom and Jerry could have quite the legs in the weeks ahead, just like the Croods has done week to week. You know, it's like what? Like it's the 14th or 15th week it's doing, still doing so well. And then a new interesting wrinkle is that New York City movie theaters are coming back online this coming Friday at 25% capacity. So that could help Tom and Jerry, although it will have some very tough competition in the family market up against Disney's Raya, which debuts. Uh, while at first it seemed like family films would fare the worst during the pandemic because Mulan crashed and burned in uh, China, although that was, again, Mulan's problem, but actually family films are doing the best, which is quite interesting. Hollywood is going to watch the box office very carefully over the next few weeks, with New York City opening and L.A. rumored to be close behind. And L.A., people feel, could be open in the next week or so, which would be 
uh, Regal, for instance, said they will not open any of their theaters in the United States until L until LA is also back online. So you're you know things are happening and they could start happening very quickly. It's a domino effect, and so I think. Hollywood will be watching very carefully to see what they decide to do with their summer movies. Disney has three movies set for May, which is supposed to kick off as it always has the summer movie season. And I think the whole industry will be watching to see what Disney does. They're going to watch the box office with Raya, but also Raya's premier access business on Disney Plus before they decide what to do with Black Widow, Cruella, and Free Guy. Will they stay theater only? Because, you know, we also have to find out for May what's going to happen with Spiral and F9 and Infinite. Those are the other big movies for the month. I personally feel feel that since this is a health issue, I feel that Warner Brothers has the right idea of letting the consumer decide. Because as you can see, a number of consumers are deciding that they want to go to the theater. So I think giving people, because again, it's a health issue, I think that through 2021, I think even through like December with Spider-Man, I think you should, I think that Hollywood should let audiences decide if they want to. I'm not saying this should be a decision that's up, you know, that can be I'm not saying this should be an industry change permanently, although you never know what's going to happen once you open Pandora's box. It's hard to close it. But I do feel that because of the health aspects to it, people really should be able to make to choose if they want to go to the theater or to stay home. And no one should be judged either way. Uh, no one's a party pooper and no one's being irresponsible. It's really a personal choice. Uh, I'm curious how you feel about what uh, should be done for the rest of the year. How would you feel if Hollywood decided to make some movies theater only? All right, now let's chart it up. Uh, Nielsen still has WandaVision in the middle of the pack. Hmm, suspicious, especially because that was its fourth episode, which was when they started to bring in the MCU elements. Uh, although that, I mean, that might be the episode that got everybody interested. So the next week, remember Nielsen's running about a, week, a month behind, we might see a substantial jump in viewership for WandaVision. But interestingly, many of you sent this to me. Variety hired their own data firm and they were like, well, actually, WandaVision is far more popular than Bridgerton. That was actually the findings of the study. And of course, as you can see on the Nielsen chart, Bridgerton has been dominating week to week. I wonder if Disney nudged Variety to put that report together, because why would they do that? And it's, it's such a big difference in results. I feel that we really desperately need a definitive trust of, trusted way to measure streaming viewership, because we can't get into a, you know, he said, she said situation here, which I think is kind of where we are. Hilariously, as for top movies on streaming that, uh, the, at the end of January, the top movie was the next three days from 2010, which debuted on Netflix. But you know what? In all fairness, that was an excellent movie. The Dig also seems to have done very well, but I got to tell you, I did not care for that movie. I'll talk about I Care A Lot also in a moment, but I watched The Dig when it debuted, and I not only thought it was an incredibly depressing movie, but then I was interested because, you know, it only seemed to like only dip a toe into the waters of that true story, and I discovered that they made up so much of that story and they misrepresented so much of what happened, and it basically was total, a total work of fiction, which really annoyed me. <laughs> now, as for Netflix's top 10 this week, their own top 10, uh, Ginny and Georgia is a big hit, while I Care A Lot is still going strong. And I did watch that movie, and I have to say it's impressively made. It's incredibly made. I would suspect that many people associated with that, with that will get a, a follow-up gig because it's so strong. But as an actual movie, I found it infuriating, and I'm not at all surprised that its audience score on Rotten Tomatoes and other places is so low, because I thought that it was... I really had a problem with the with the way that it ended, and I thought that it was a. I hate to say it because the Mary Sue term is so so many times used as a weapon unfairly, but she was the criminal Mary Sue. I mean, who doesn't check to make sure a body's dead? All right. Anyway, I had some I have problems with it, but it was still incredibly well made. I think I've seen few films that had that level of intensity throughout. Uh, I also continue to be impressed with Netflix's audience's willingness to watch outside the box. You guys are willing to try anything, and I think that's fantastic. Bigfoot Family is a French animated film. I mean, sure, they have the uh, English dub, but that's really fantastic to see it doing so well. Age of Samurai is a history show. Look how, but it's, how cool is that though? The Age of Samurai with reenactments, reenactments, but that's doing very well. And then there's reality show Canine Intervention. I think this is so cool about a dog whisperer who handles difficult canines with a real focus, you know, not only is the, is the star a person of color, but a real focus on, um, you know, uh, people of color 
you know, as the people who, whose dogs are being helped. And that's rare for reality shows. You don't see that a lot in, in most reality shows. So I think this is fantastic. Netflix is really winning with diversity. Like the, the Netflix always finds a new way to innovate and everyone else always seems to be following them. Good for them. You want to be a trailblazer. Uh, it's unfortunate that it has, that has to be tr considered trailblazing, but at least Netflix is doing it. Over on iTunes, The Croods is finally available to rent for just $6 and is once again dominating. It's been in the top 10 for like, like a, for months, but now it's back at number one. That's such a good movie. Uh, horror film Wrong Turn is strong out of the gate, mostly an unknown cast, plus Matthew Modine. Did anyone watch that? Was it good? And then awards contender Minari is attracting a crowd at a $20 rental. Uh, I reviewed that film uh, in my, uh, my Oscar Roundup uh, video. Uh, I think it's very unsatisfying, but I think that it's a very well packaged movie. I think people want it to be good. I certainly did. So I'm not at all surprised that people are flocking to check it out. But I bet most people are a little disappointed. Did you watch Minari? All right, so, and wow, Bob and, uh, Barb and Star is a hit, boy. I said, you know, uh, a week or so ago on a movie math that maybe Kristen Wiig should be following the footsteps of Will Ferrell, who she frequently worked with on when they were both on SNL. But, you know, Kristen Wiig has tried to be more serious of an actor, but I think the Will Ferrell track is really, is calling to her because it's still in the top 10. It's holding up with a very strong audience score, less impressive on Rotten Tomatoes, but still, and it's a $20 rental, so that's really great. Now, as for this coming week, there aren't any real new series starting, but when it comes to movies, March is popping. On uh, uh, Thursday, uh, Paramount Plus launches with the SpongeBob movie. Uh, my review went up on Saturday. You can check that out now. Then on Friday, there's movies coming from everywhere and playing everywhere. Raya, as, uh, as we've just been discussing, is hitting theaters and will be available on Disney Plus. Um, for $30 premiere access. My review, The Embargo Lifts Tomorrow at Noon. I will just tell you here, it is worth the $30. I, well, it's up to you, but I guarantee you, I guarantee you, guarantee you, you will watch Raya at least twice. So you'll get your money's worth. Uh, Coming to America hits Amazon Prime. Uh, that's at no extra cost if you're a Prime member. Boss Level will debut on Hulu. Uh, you know, that's like not the same level, but that's a pretty, you know, it's, uh, you know, it's, it's a pretty good, you know, group of people there. And then Chaos Walking and Boogie hit theaters only. Uh, although with New York opening, it'll be interesting to see how they do. Uh, and the Golden Globes are tonight. You know, I was considering whether or not I should even cover them. That's something a number of journalists have been wrestling with because the scandals that rocked the Hollywood Foreign Press Association this past week have been horrible. We've always known that the HFPA has been corrupt. But to find out the level of corruption and the kickbacks that they're getting within the organization and that they've kept their numbers small, like a mob group, not only small so they don't have to share too much of the money with other people, but that they haven't had uh, a black member in their small group of 87 members for I think like a decade or something uh, is just horrible. And they've been called out by many organizations, expect a number of speeches tonight from winners and maybe even presenters to touch on this. And it's so bad that the Hollywood Foreign Press Association has promised that they will address it tonight during the telecast. So it's going to be interesting. I will definitely be covering this. Uh, I'll be live tweeting the show and I'll be uh, going over it tomorrow in the live stream. Uh, so if you would like to watch with me, I'll be over on Twitter. And I think it might be worth a gander. All right, so that's this week's movie math. Thanks so much for tuning in. Share your thoughts down below. Subscribe today. And of course, as always, you can check out some more videos right now.